Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. We're back at the Vista Cruiser wagon. And this one, we're going to install hood pins. These, uh, the 442s came with hood pins built into the fiberglass hoods. But what we're going to do, we're going to install them in a steel hood. Recessed and locking. Stick around. Okay, let's get started. Uh, in the last video, this one here, um, we went over and we actually made these two scoops uh, from scratch. And basically, we just used an old hood off a 2000 Chev truck and then we made everything up as we went. Uh, it was long steps involved in and taking your time doing it piece by piece by piece. I made two at the same time. Now, we end up got them, two of them done. And there have been a lot of responses to it. Um, a lot of guys talking about, uh, the 442 guys talking about the different years, makes, models, and all this type of stuff. Uh, I'm not reproducing a factory car, okay? Uh, yes, these did come in fiberglass. They came fiberglass over steel, and they also came complete fiberglass. I think the reproductions today are all fiberglass hoods. And uh, But the original first model ones came, uh, and they actually came in... Uh, there were uh, fiberglass over steel frames. Now that we got the two scoops made, before we go mounting them, there's a few things we got to deal with. Uh, there's one more thing I want to add to this hood, and that is the hood pins. You see these pictures here. Uh, these come with hood pins mounted in the hood as well. And uh, I want to install a set of them in this car. Um, these here are a different style altogether. This, this is in them here. I have two brackets. I have one mounted on the truck car now because I had to figure out where I went to. And I got these, these here sections here. Now these are countersunk into the hood. Um, these here don't go lay flat on. I'll show you a picture here how they're mounted. And you'll see that they're countersunk in. I have measurements of the width of them, the size of them, and all that type of stuff. I got two of them, two of these. And these are two brackets that are mounted to the bottom side of the hood to keep these pins in place. Uh, what I got to do is I got to find the center of them right here, which I have already done. I played around and figured out where it went to, and I show you now how I found this, this point here. We were given two of these brackets here. This is what the actual pin locks to. This is the way the pin is designed. It goes down through there, through that hole there, and then you turn it and it locks it in place. You can see the way that the keyway is on the bottom side of it here, the way it locks. You can see it. And uh, so the... Uh, what I had to do was figure out where this went to. And uh, basically all it does is it mounts to the original hood stop. There's an excess hole here. I'm going to drill another one over here for that to bolt to. But this is where the mount goes. It only goes in one place. Like over here you can see the mounting hole is here for that one. And then there's the original cover. So this, I just unbolt this here, use this existing hole and drill another one. And that will give us the point. So then what I went and did is then I figured out the distance this is off of this here coming across this way to the center line and also how far back and forward and I just used a square on that and I marked it on the fender this is all I did I put that there lined it up with the center line of the hole and then I marked it according to like that there so I marked it so I was on the center of the hole and whatnot and then I just transferred that to the top side of the hood so what I got to do is I got to drill holes now down through it to get this mechanism to fit down through the bottom of the hood. So that's what we're going to size up here now. And I got it already marked out on this side here. You can see it. Hard to see the light, but right here. That's where the mark is too. So I'm going to drill that out there now and drill down through that there. I'm going to get a decent sized hole in here. Because what I got to do, I got to make a uh, pocket for this to fit into and drop it down a half an inch. Because that's how deep the pocket is. Now how I'm going to make the pocket... I was going to sit, sit around and uh, play around and make up strips and whatever, but I just went and picked up a piece of exhaust pipe that is the diameter that I need, okay? And this will fit down inside of this here, like so, okay? And I'll just cut that off. I'll, I'll make it a bit bigger for now, cap the end of it, get it all finished, all, everything done to it, so that I can start fitting that into the hole. Because this will fit down into the hole a half an inch, and uh, I'll... Uh, have this piece here so this here fits into it 
and locks into it on the bottom side with this piece of pipe so I can mark the height of it and whatnot, right? So I'm going to go ahead first and start uh, marking out these holes and getting this hole drilled down through. Uh, I have a bunch of measurements. The problem I always, I've been having is the front of the hood is always different than these. But from the diagrams that I've seen, the location of where it's at is in, in this position here. And I'm basing it off the factory mounting point on the rad sport. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out and see how close I am. Okay, I went ahead and I drilled down a 1A hole down to the top. And then I went right down through the two frames. This one here and the bottom frame underneath of the hood with the, a quarter bit. And what I went and did then is to verify where I'm to in the junction with this here. If you look closely at it, you can see there I got it all marked out. Got a piece of tape put across it just for curiosity. And you can see right here is where the hole came through, right here. So I want to see to make sure that uh, where I'm to in this here for the alignment. All I'm going to do with that is close the hood all the way. And I'm just going to take a simple little screwdriver, go down through it. Poke it down through the tape. So we know we're close. And there's the mark. Worked out pretty good. We're inside the hole, which is good. So what I got to do now is I can fine-tune that after I get all this cut out. I got to make these holes bigger so I can actually get the mechanism down through it. And uh, get it all fitting in there. So let's get this all drilled out now so I can uh, start working on the top side of it. To see how big of a hole I got to make in this here. So here's what I got done. I went ahead and I took a hole saw and I cut out the saw upper hole. Then I went down to the lower one and I drilled that out with the step bit. And you can actually see, if you're looking down through there, you can see how nice it lines up with the bracket underneath it. So I wanted to make sure that I was in line with the hood with the hood shut. And all I'd used was like, you know, this is the biggest one I got. So I used this one here. Uh, it, it'd be nice if it was a little bit bigger because the problem I got now is I still got to make it bigger, but I'm going to do that with a die grinder. Um, I went and cut a bit, band of that exhaust out for just a template to lay over the top of it to figure out uh, where it's going to go and whatnot, and uh, so I can figure out everything. Now, the, the issue I'm running into, I noticed in the uh, pictures that there's a bump where this uh, mechanism goes, and this is the steel frame underneath the uh, thing. I got to remove this section for this to work now, and I'm going to have to rework the inner. Um, structure on this here to make this work i only got to go down a half an inch on this here to make this work because this only goes down a half an inch depth on this entire thing so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to mark this out i'm going to drill this down with the um, hole saw as well and just go down about a half an inch a little more than a half an inch because i'm going to have to cut it all out anyway and uh, remove it so it's out of my way and that way i can just put a bump in it after the fact but it'll be out of my way in order to continue on making this here the right size you can see here now where I got a cut. I just went down through it with the hole saw along the edge here. Now this is going to have to be cut out and made bigger, but I have an idea where it's to now, and it's down a little bit more than a half inch. So I'm going to go in now and I'll cut this piece out of her and remove this out of the way. And I'm going to go clean up this area here so I can actually get a, a clean marking on where I'm going to actually mark it back to so I can actually clean all this up to get it the right size for the pipe to go down through. So I went ahead and I cleaned up around the area. I cut that piece out of the way so it's out of my way there. And then I went and laid the piece of uh, pipe that I got on top of it. I marked it on the outside of it. So this is how far back I got it cut. I don't cut the marker off. I just cut out to the marker line, okay? Now how are we going to go about doing that? Well, I've done this in another video before. I have an abundance of these here uh, grinding wheels left over from, you know, different things. And I hold on them for everything. Here's the piece of machinery that I got. What I need is something that will fit down the side of it that I can start it with. And then when it gets close to the size of it, I'll finish it off at one that's a little bit smaller than it, like so. That'll help me keep it round, instead of like trying to do it with freehand with a die grinder, it'll be all over the place, right? And I'll just use the grinder, much the same as I would like this. And I got another one here that's a little bit bigger. That'll make the hole too big, as you can see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this one here, after I get it opened up pretty well, close to where I want with this one here. And then I'll just finish it off this one here and do the final fitting with this, this grinding disc here. And that's all I'll do is I'll take this here and I'll go in here and I'll just grind this like so. All the way around there and just grind it back until I'm uh, happy that I'm back to, back to this section here. And then I'll change the disc out and put a larger disc in it and then 
because we're spinning around, it'll actually help keep the whole thing round. If you were trying to do this freehand with a grinder, it's very hard. Now, it'd be a lot nicer if you had a hole saw this size. Yes, we don't have a hole saw this size. All we have is a bunch of old grinding discs. So I'm making do with what I got around. So as you can see now, it fits down there. The, doing the, gr the grinder, like on the stone, doing it that way, you're taking up a lot more area. So you just take your time and just move back slowly, bit at a time, test fit it, to grind it again, right? Trying to do that freehand uh, with like a die grinder is very hard to do. That's why it's always good to hold on to them old stones as they get smaller. Great for doing jobs like this here, right? Now, next thing I got to do now is I got to make uh, the bottom for the pocket. I gotta take a piece of steel now and have it so I can center the hole up here and drill the hole out. Okay, so all I went and did is I turned around and I cut out a piece of uh, 18 gauge that I had here and I'm gonna use that for my bottom. I'm not gonna worry about cutting out a circle or anything, I'm just gonna cut that out with the grinder and after the fact. Um, so you know, this here is uh, 16 gauge and this is 18 gauge. This is just an exhaust pipe. For any of you that are new to this metal thing, when I talk about gauges of metal, um, you should always understand and remember one thing. The smaller the number, the larger, the thicker the metal is. So like 16 gauge, right, is thicker than 18 gauge. So, and then, then 20 gauge will be thinner than 18 gauge, that type of thing. So just remember simple numbers. Um, the smaller the number, the thicker the metal. The bigger the number, uh, the thinner the metal. So all I'm going to do right here now is I'm just going to turn around. I'm going to tack weld this on here, weld this around. I'm going to trim it up so I can weld it on. What I went and did is I beveled back the edge here a small bit because I want to leave some meat there. So when I do weld this edge here, I'm trying to get away with not doing too much work on the inside here because uh, I'm not going to weld this up in here because it'll be too hard to dress. I just want to weld it on the outside edge here and then grind it and finish it off. And I bevel back the edge so that when I grind it flat, there's still meat there on the, on the cornered edge there. I might leave a little bit on it. I might even open up this hole a small bit more just so that it fits down or nicer. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll get when I get to that. But I'm not going to worry about the center hole yet. Uh, after I get this welded on and grind it up, then I'll figure out where the center is to and I'll drill out the center. So I'm going to go ahead now and just weld this in place here now. This is all I did. I turned around, I went around, I tacked, welded it around. Not too worried about trying to make the perfect hole. You can see the way it is. Now I'll just come here now and I'll just start zipping this off, cutting it off, and I'll grind it so it's a nice circle. I won't do no more uh, welding on this now until I get it all fitting right nice. So I'm going to go ahead now and chop all this off and uh, grind it up so that it's ready to weld. That's all I did. Just chopped it off with the grinder all the way around. See all the pieces there are cut off it. Just go around it now and I'll just take the ear grinder now and the 24 grit disc and I'll just grind it all around so it fits right nice. There you have it. I just grinded it off, grind the welds and all. So it was all flush and flat all the way around so you can look at it. It's a lot easier. I find a lot faster to do it this way. You can sit down and trim this up and make the piece up and then try to fit it and then you can work your way around it and do it, but I've, I've learned over the years, you've seen me do it many times, that I weld things together and then I grind it to shape it. Uh, it's just faster and I just find it a lot more satisfying to the whole point that I'm getting the exact measurement that I'm after. Because uh, you try to draw this out on a, on a template and then draw it out on a piece of steel and trim it all up and then fit it on this here and then twist it around and realize there's a gap over here and there's overlapping over here and there's egg shape here and whatnot, right? So... Just turn around, don't overthink it, just lay it on a flat piece of steel, weld it on, and then trim it up. I'm going to go ahead down and go around, I'm going to weld all this up here along here now, 
and I'm going to grind all that there nice and smooth, flat on this side here, and I'm going to, I'm going to touch the bottom of it. I'm not going to roll the edge running on this here, but I have enough here now that I'm hoping I'm going to get enough penetration because I don't want to get into here. I want to get the heat, the heat to pass through in here, but I'm going, to, I'm going to try to stay away from doing anything in here because it's going to be very hard, not easy to do. I can probably clean it up a small bit with a uh, little small zip wheel. But I'm not going to bother to weld this inside here. I'm just going to weld it on the outside. That's why, I, as you can see, there's like a little V gap there, right? So I'm going to get that welded up now. While I'm waiting for the other one to cool off, I'm going to go ahead and start making one for the other side. And a uh, quick little tip. Um, this is only got to be about a half inch. I'm cutting off about three quarters to an inch. I'm just giving a bit of extra there. I'm going to trim it all up when I get it on the car. I got a uh, strip of cardboard here now, and all I'm doing is I'm wrapping this around it, okay? That's all I'm doing with this. Now, when you line up these two sections of cardboard like so, you now have a straight line going right around that piece there. So I'll mark this with a marker, and that will be my edge that I'll cut off. That way I'll have a nice straight line all the way around the piece of pipe. Here it is, all grind up. I gotta grind this off now and find the center and everything of it. And I got it marked off a half inch because this is the depth it says it's supposed to be is a half an inch deep. So I got it marked off. But uh, on the inside here, uh, you can see the other one here I welded up. You can see the, uh, the penetration was really good and it went right on through the inside of it there. So all I went and did then is I grinded up the inside of it and dressed it so I had a nice edge on it. Now how I did that was with this, okay? Air grinder, one of them cotton wheels. It fits right down in there and there's a nice sharp cornered edge and it'll just grind right along that edge there. And you can just uh, clean it up as you go all the way around. And that's how I clean that up on the inside of it. I don't want to get too much into that there. I'm going to have to put a little smidgen of filler or whatever on it when it comes time to, uh, to prime and paint the car. Uh, I don't want to put too much welding in here because uh, inside corners are extremely hard to do, okay? Uh, it takes a lot of time to do them and the less amount of work you can put in here the better it is If I can just get away with just priming this area with a couple of coats of primer I will if there's any little imperfections on it. I'll put a little skim in it uh, So all I got to do now is I want to clean this up some more clean this flat and I'm going to start putting X's on this to find my center All I went and did here is I measured across it was three inches on the outside so one and a half one and a half one and a half found my center I uh, punched it and drilled it out with a one eight hole. Now I'm going to upsize that to a larger hole so I can get the uh, the mechanism, that there, to fit down through that. Okay, I got the holes made bigger. I got to go to Princess Auto and pick up some larger step bits because I had to do all this with die grinder. And I had to do also the body on the thing. I had to make it big enough so that this pin itself would fit down through the hole, right? And on the bottom side, there's this clip here. This here will go on after the fact to keep it from coming upwards. This is put on with two screws, okay? And that'll keep that from coming up. Uh, but uh, I played around with it. I tapped it in place, marked it. That's the re one of the reasons why I left it this long, because I wasn't sure where it should go. So when I take this now, fit this down there. Change hands, I'm left-handed. Not hard to anything with right hand. There you go. There you go, and it's locked in place. And it's got a nice tight fit to it. Right? The way it goes, and so I know it's my depth now, right? So basically what I'll do now is I'll just know where my depth is there, and I can tack weld this on and grind this flush, like I did these out here. Same process, grind that flush, and then weld it around there. That's the place. But, I got some work to do on the inside of the hood first. As you can see here now, this is the bottom of the pocket that I'm putting in there, and it sticks out past here. Now, and this pin comes down through here. Now, there's a plate that goes around here that screws on here, and it'll screw on right here. So, what I got to do is I got to build a section now that'll weld onto this here and weld in along here to cover in that pocket. So, this will actually look like it comes down and steps out for the pocket, because that's the way they were originally. And uh, so, basically, I got to do all this before I even bother to put that pocket in place first. So, let's get started on that. Sometimes, a simple little project can turn into a royal nightmare. <laughs> I was at this here, and I got this all fitting. I went and turned around, and I made up the piece on the top. I fitted the outside of it. I clicked it down through, and I clicked it all in place. And I left it for the day, just to, you know, think about it. I said, I'll go over on the other side now, and I'll mount the other side. I said, I'll go over on the other side, and I'll mount this one here. So then I started taking measurements and everything off it and whatnot. So when I got up here on the top of the hood... 
Uh, I measured, I marked out where, where the spot was too, which is right here. Okay, hard to see in the marker. I got a little marker spot there. Let me see it. Yeah, a little right there. And uh, I marked it there. When I measured from here to here, I was off over a quarter of an inch compared to that side. Because I would like to have them two things in the same position on the hood, okay? Now, when I come over here to realize it, the hood was not lined up with the fender, okay? On the back side. Now, I had good seams. I looked down the sides, everything looked good. I had good seams and everything. But the problem I had is the hood was back, okay? Now, I ended up moving the hood ahead so that the back of the hood, right here, would line up with the fender, okay? Now, this is how you line up the panels on these cars, okay? You line up the, pa the, the hood to the edge of the fender, and you do the same one on the other side. I had to bring this side back to line up the fender. Now, by doing so, it closed up the gap on this side of the hood, and opened up the gap on this side of the hood. Now, you would think that's straightforward and simple. Move the rad support over. This car had damage on it at one time. This side here was damaged on it, okay? Somewhere along the line. This fender and doors were placed on this car. And whoever done it, uh, butchered it. Okay. <laughs> I turned around and started letting go the rad support. I got that let go. It won't move over because the bumper was bolted on. Because it was bringing up in the fender on the other side. So I took the bumper, clean right off the car. And then I started doing more investigations and looking into stuff and whatever. And what I noticed was back here... was filler on the edge of this fit door. What they ended up doing is they had, they had this large gap, because I noticed this up top, there was a bit of a gap here, and I got this all, this is a bit more what it was, I got it all loosened up here now. But there was a, a bit of a gap here, more than much call, and I looked on the other side where this point was to, in reference to this, which was roughly in the middle of this, okay? Almost to the middle of this post on the other fender. Now, when I got into it, you'd see here, I'll show you in this video, um, you'd see that as you go down the post, you get down so far, you can see how thick it, they added a quarter of an inch to the end of the door to close up the gap. That's how they done it, they done it with filler. Now, there's damage and everything there, I'm not getting into that, I just went back to the metal to get myself a gap so I can actually line all this up. And by this being a wide gap here, when you line up the hood here, It'll actually move everything over, okay? So what I got to do now is I got to get this fender to fit the door. When you're lining panels up, let's back this up a bit. When you're lining up panels on a car, some, a lot of people have asked me about this. You have your quarter panel as a solid piece, okay? Never bolt the fender on a car expecting it to all fit, okay? You've got a quarter panel, put your back door on. Get your back door fitting good. Your back door is fitting good, get your front door on. Get your front door fitting good. Once the front door's on, then get your fender to fit the door, and so on. And that's the way you've got to be done. Like, you're not going to start from the front of a car, bolt the front clip on it, and then bolt the doors on it, and then, you know, next thing you get back here and realize everything's off up here. Luckily, I've, after looking at all this, this here all looks good, okay? Uh, the doors are good on this side, so my problem starts here. Uh, I had to let go of the bottom bolts on it. All the bolts were, were nuts and bolts. Whoever bolted together, I don't know how to tighten them up. Um, but the... Uh, I had to cut all of them off to get the bolts off the bottom of the fenders. Uh, this bolt in here wasn't even tight. This bolt here wasn't even tight. It was just there like that. You could spin that like that with your finger to wash around it. So it's just, you know, the way people do things sometimes. And of course, not knocking the guy that done it, he probably got $200 to put a fender in the door and paint it on this back in the day. And he had to get it done and get it in and get it out. And he got it on the car and he done whatever he could as quick as he could. But we're restoring it now. And so we got to address all this. So I'm going to go ahead now. I've got to get this fender moved back. i got to get the hood all aligned. Rad support moved over. Because that's how i got to line all this up. The fender got to go back. And then i got to move the rad support over this way to close up the gap. Once it gets all that done, then I'm back to this. Because now this won't line up now. Uh, I should have crossed this bridge, but you know, sometimes you never know. I was opening and closing this hood, and open and close is perfect, okay? And I had a good gap here, a good gap here. I never closely looked at this section here. I never closely looked at this here with reference to this. This was a head probably, 
was it no it was back a small bit yes it was back a small bit probably the here and i noticed it this morning and i said no we're gonna have to dress this now i'll i'll cross that i'll go back to that after and fix that but first thing i got to do is i got to get all this straightened up so now i got everything straightened away uh i had to move the rad support over about um a quarter of an inch over that way to get the gaps right to go up along there okay so i got all that there done all you do all you do that is you got on these old uh, gms basically all of them polish chevelle the whole works of them um the fenders are mounted to the the main body and to a rad support that runs across here there's two bolts that bolts the rad support on between them two bolts and the body there's nothing other than what's bolted onto the body you let these two front bolts go you can slide the front side to side to square it up for the for the hood right and uh, so I got all that done. I got the bolts tightened back up again and everything. Uh, one little trick that I've uh, talked to a lot of people, everybody asked me about lining doors, lining, stuff like that. One of the crucial things that I've been doing, I've always done, uh, get this open, one-handed, uh, is every time you're lining panels, doors, and hoods, remove the latch, okay? I got the latch let go and let go. The, the catch is still on it. I don't mind that. But the latches here and these door latches here, okay, them there, let two of them, let them go as well. Your door should swing freely and line itself up just by swinging freely, same with your hood. Every time you put a striker or a latch in, in the mix, uh, this here latch can pull the hood this way, it can pull the hood this way, and it can pull the hood down, it can lift it up, you know, not pull it down far enough. So that there is an adjustment in itself. Trying to fool around to having that on it and then try to get these seams. Too many times I've seen guys with these here with the latch bolted on. And when they close the hood, the hood would come down and then move over. And then, they're, you know, and they let it go and it pop up. And this is what it's doing every time he does it. That's the latch pulling over on the hood. That can pull a good quarter of an inch to either side if it really wants to. And you won't even notice it on the latch. So... I always recommend removing any latches or strikers off panels when you're doing alignment on them. And then once you got the, the panel aligned, what I'll do is I'll reinstall this now. See, look, this hood closes now. It's got a nice seam there. It's a nice seam there. It's lined up with the molding here, and it's lined up with the molding here, right? So everything is lining up for me, and I'm happy with it. And uh, so now I can put the latch on, and I know that this is the gaps that I want. So when I put my latch on, and it pulls one way, I know it's the latch and not the gaps on the hood. Uh, another little thing. <laughs> Lord, jump and suck. The door must have caught the wind some time or another. had a small bit of damage on it. But when they put the fender on the car, uh, they moved the fender right in. And, or it was right forward, and when it was right forward, everything was full up, and they built the fender out, the door out, to match the fender. Like, the fender was stuck off too far, and this is what they did. Now that I got everything let go, and I got the top side adjusted enough here, all this down here now, I had to cut all this off it. <coughs> but that's typical. I've seen this many, many times. I'm not shocked with that. Um, that's the reason why I grinded off the edge of it, because it had such a large gap, gap on it. That's the reason why everything was thrown out of whack here and I had to move everything back. So I got that all adjusted. It's all let go, the bottom of the fender's let go. I just got to tighten up here so that the hood, the alignment on the hood is all right because all this got to be uh, stripped down and done again. I'm not getting into this. I only wanted to get it lined up so I can get the hood finished. So that's one thing. I want to try not to jump all over this. Um, I only chipped all this off so I can actually open the door because the door was actually rubbing right there. And that on the edge of the filler was actually hooking the fender. So I had to chip all that off in order to get a clear of it. <laughs> but now we're back to this. This is where we're to now. Now, I am... Where am I to? All that fooling around. And that's how much I'm off. So I'm here debating it. I got all this made. I got this fitting in the hood nice. The holes are all made down through here nice. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is modify that brace on the bottom so that it fits this hood because i had this fitting really nice it actually had it snapped on the whole nine works and i just assumed because right now that's going down to the center of the pin where the pin goes and you can see it's off that's how much the hood was off with all the alignment and everything 
So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to let go of the lower brace. And I'm going to size that up to where it's to. And I'm going to adjust it to uh, fit what I got done here now. Because if I has to move this back, I'm going to have to put a big sliver here in the hood. This whole front section of the hood here will be back to about here. Uh, like this will just there'll be a gap there. Almost a quarter of an inch gap on the bottom side. So I just assume that bracket is adjustable. And I can probably modify it a bit to make it fit this. So if you look down there now, you can see the uh, the hole is in the middle again. I got this all lined up now. I'll put all that there together. But I'll show you what I got under. Basically all I went and did is I cut the tabs off it. If you look at it, you can see how off-center this is. I wanted to keep this in the in the factory location like this. And I had to move it over this much. And I had to move these brackets as well. As well as this one here had to be moved back. So all I did is I just cut them tabs off, got it where I wanted it, then I welded this tab back on, and then welded these back on, and just oblonged the hole here. This hole here still lined up pretty good. I just had to make it a little bit bigger. So I got that figured out. This was a lot easier for me to do than it was to turn around and modify the, the hood itself, change the hood, which I'm happy with. So I'm going to go ahead and now fit, modify this other one. What I'm doing, see what I did with this one over here the last time is I measured it off of this one. I measured off from here, I measured off from points up here and stuff like that to get the location of this one. And then I've transferred it up to the hood once I got this fitted because I want two of these in the same location. So I'll modify this one now, move it out, do whatever got to be done with it and weld it all up and get that one fitted up so that it's the same location as this one here. And then I can go ahead then and drill the hood and get all that straightened away. Is it? It's fitting nice now and everything. So that one's all set up. I can turn around and weld that one in around here and I'll grind it all flush. So I'm going to go ahead now and get the other one done. So I got both of them done. Uh, same process the other side. I just cut it and used the grinder to open it up and to fit it down. In it. And I got the clips put in place and they, they work really good. They lock in place, as you can see. All right. And all I got to do now is I got to pull these up so they're comfortable and there's not too much of a strain on this here and then I'm going to tack weld this around here. The reason why I left some excess on this because trying to make it perfectly fit uh, would run into an issue because you don't know what way the height of it's going to be uh, for it to be nice for the, the actual uh, lock itself because if you got it too tight uh, it would be very hard to, uh, to lock these and the bottom side is non-adjustable. And so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start setting these up. You can move them around or still see. And I'll set them up to where I want to, and I'll put a few tacks on them, and then I'll haul these pieces off. So I'm not going to burn them up or whatever, right? So let's get them welded up there now. All I did, as you can see, I got three pairs of voice grips on this here. When I got this done here now, these are pulling up on the, the cup itself. So a, a, there's a spring on the bottom of this here that's pushing down. And I like to get it up half tight. And all I did is I used this. I pulled it up with this, clamped it here so that... It wouldn't fall down no farther than the voice grips. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tack weld that on. I'm happy it works too. It opens and closes good. See? And I'm going to tack weld that on a few spots there down. Let it cool down. Now you probably could have cut this down and made it fit flush and everything, but the problem you're going to run into is trying to get the nice fit on it. I got this set up now so that it fits right nice, and this here opens and closes good. So all I'll do now is I'll just take the grinder now and I'll go around and I'll cut this off, grind it down, and grind it flush. I'll remove these, of course. I'm going to go ahead now and get the other one set up the same way so I can get both of them welded in.
So that's all I got done. I went out round in afterwards and I went and uh, put a couple more tacks on it. I got the other one all grind down and ready to go. Done the same thing. Grind around. You can see all I did was just grind it back until it went flush. And you can see right here, you can see where it goes flush here now. So when I weld this along here, I'm not welding on the edge. See, I'm welding on the outside of this piece here and then to the, to the hood. And I'm putting lots of heat into it so I can actually get good penetration into it. And just taking my time going right around. So when I grind this down flush, uh, I'm not going to be weakening this corner because the it's not on the corner edge. It's behind it It's on the back side of the panel right there So I'm just going to go around now and just tack weld this cool it off tack weld it cool it Take my time doing it to keep it from warping and then grind it off flush There you have two of them all welded up, all cooled down. All I got left to do now is just grind all them off and then clean up and just put a little slight rolled edge on them all. But this I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the 24 grit uh, grinding disc and I'm going to grind it flat this way. I'm not going to grind the edge of it at all, I'm just going to grind it flat so I've got a nice sharp edge all the way around and then I'm going to dress up and roll the edge on it.
there you have them all dressed up you see me put the straight edge across it I got very little or no warpage in that section and we're welding up a hood which is quite amazing you just got to take your time with it you see me cooling it even while I was grinding uh, you've got to try to control the heat on welding or on grinding and all that especially on these hood panels it is very tricky it's a slow process but you do get a nice outcome when it's all said and done right I got both of them done there now I'm gonna rig two of them up now and put two of the hapses in there and snap them in place and see what it looks like so here's the pin this is a simple setup got a little spring in it this will be stuck on it's a piece of stainless it's all covered over now and I got the two-way tape on the back side of it but this here just goes down through the hole and hooks on a little thing and you just turn it to lock it in place and it's a pretty simple setup works best kind that's it and there you have two hood pins installed ready to go a little bit of body work on that now nothing serious turn it down lock it push down and turn the lock Nice simple little setup. It's permanently mounted there now. I haven't even got a hood latch on this. I don't like how it's on the catch and she won't even budge them. They serve their purpose in their day. I like them. Okay. Anyway, um, I was hoping to pop this hood off, put the uh, wagon out by the door, but we're into a sleet storm here now. Uh, we got freezing rain, snow. Uh, it's a mess outside, so I can't go putting the wagon out to do that. I need room to work on this hood. Uh, so I want to flip it over and get it ready and finish welding up the bottom side of this. But I want to take the hood off to do that. So I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to end this one here. Installing a set of vintage uh, style 442 hood latches into a steel hood. A lot of you talked about it. They never did come in steel hoods. No, they did not. They came in fiberglass complete or fiberglass over steel. Um, this is basically we're making our own so uh, gonna leave this here now you guys can see it any questions leave it in the comments below the next video now I'm hoping to I will be getting these welded up and I'll be prepping the hood I'll get the bottom side of that welded up and I'll get the hood all prepped and possibly even mount them scoops I'm not quite sure because that's gonna be a bit tedious but I will get these done for sure um i gotta put the car out for that because i need some room in here to do it i'm gonna weld all this up off the car and give me a lot of room to walk right around it but uh, that's basically it but anyway that's another one i hope the tips were good and until next time